Religion in U.S. worth more than Google and Apple combined. Huh, that's crazy. That's just in the U.S. Imagine how much it would be worldwide. Faith economy worth $1.2 trillion a year, more than combined revenues of 10 biggest tech firms in America, study shows. What do you mean by religion? Which religion are you talking about? Who and where is all this money going to? You can't just say religion makes a lot of money. The faith economy has a higher value than the combined revenues of the top 10 technology companies in the U.S., including Apple, Amazon, and Google, says the analysis from Georgetown University in Washington, D.C. <sighs> Imagine a world where that money went towards humanitarian aid or medical research. Wouldn't that be something? Imagine a world where you never read the headline, Faith Healing Parents Charged with Murder in Death of Premature Twin Baby. The Mitchells, driven by religion, failed to send for medical aid when their newborn baby stopped breathing. The baby died mere hours later. Imagine a world where the bigots had to admit that their gay hatred is their own idea, where they can't say it's not them. It's just their God's commands. Homosexuals first and foremost harm themselves. They are 50% more likely to suffer from depression and to engage in substance abuse. They are 200% more likely to commit suicide. They will die around 20 years earlier than straight people as a direct result of the increased disease involved in their lifestyle. They are destined never to find a settled life partner. The Journal of Sex Research tells us that 85% of heterosexual married women stay faithful. 75% of heterosexual married men stay faithful, whereas just 4.5% of homosexual men stay faithful. That's a huge gap that gives us insight into the brokenness of the gay lifestyle. The promiscuity means that even though gay people are under 2% of the population, they make up 61% of HIV cases. It is vastly more disease prone. Furthermore, the incidences of domestic violence between homosexual men is nearly double that of the heterosexual population. A Northwest Western University study involving 30,000 participants reported, one of our startling findings was that the rates of domestic violence among same-sex couples is pretty consistently higher than for opposite-sex couples. Previous studies have suggested that as many as 75% of the homosexual population will experience domestic violence at some point in their lives. The amount of promiscuity, disease, violence and early death prevalent within the gay lifestyle doesn't speak of a perfectly healthy, legitimate alternative lifestyle because it isn't. The facts speak of people who are hurting, confused, and broken because they are. Imagine a world without religious wars, without violent acts of terrorism rooted in brainwashed indoctrination, where we unite to build a world worth living in rather than suicide bombing a crowd to escape it. Imagine a world in which people didn't claim jurisdiction over the experience of others based on what they've taken on faith. Once upon a time, there were three virtuous girls. I take them with me on my evangelism tours, and they work with me. My name is Paul. This is Faith. A lot of people underestimate Faith because they think she's blind. But behind the sunglasses are the eyes of a hunter. Faith! Ha! Faith is believing what you know ain't so! Not really, Mr. Twain. Let's see what Faith is really about. Faith definitely isn't blind, but she is loyal, the most loyal of my three angels. So why do people think Faith is blind? I think the reason is that they misunderstand her background. Oh, come on. Just look at Hebrews 11.1. 1. It says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Not seen. Faith is blind. 
Not really, Mr. Twain. So there you have it, the story of my angel faith. We'll see you next time. Imagine a world. Look everyone, it's the godless conspiracy nut. Where L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, would have never been born. Therefore, we would have never been introduced to such a stupid, illogical, dumb belief system. But instead, this religion today is worth over $1.75 billion. This money, if L. Ron Hubbard would have never been born, could have easily went into scientific endeavor for kids, for school, for reason, and philosophy and logic. If that money did go into those things, atheism would be dead. Imagine a world where nothing said or written was taken on the authority of the speaker or writer, where every claim was accepted only proportionally to the supporting evidence, where such evidence and the interpretation was continually challenged and therefore improved, where the support for the claims was not only readily available to everyone, it was frequently accessed. By everyone. It would be a good world to live in. When I imagine a world without religion, I don't necessarily imagine a perfectly peaceful world. What I do imagine, however, is a world where we are living in a reality where people are killing over their imaginary friends every single day. I don't imagine a world where people would always have reasonable discussions despite a difference in ideas. But what I do imagine is a world where people aren't scared for their lives when they criticise or discuss others' ideas. A world where we don't make excuses for extremists because someone offended their religion. Imagine a world without organised religion, particularly Islam. A world where freedom of ideas doesn't mean a risk to human lives every single day. Imagine a world without hijab, where you can see the wind blow through an Iranian girl's luscious beautiful hair. I like this world you're talking about, but I know it's not really the world you want. Imagine a world where no one spends precious time and money on treatments of disease which are not evidence-based. Countless lives are lost every year because people fall victim to pseudoscientific practices that just simply don't work. Often, these practices are based on beliefs involving the supernatural. Regardless of their origin, though, practices without an evidential basis are dangerous when relied upon as medical treatment. As a result, effective treatments are disregarded, and fatal diseases are allowed to run their full course. Ultimately, tearing grandparents from their grandkids, tearing mothers and fathers from their children, and in strokes of the cruelest form of cosmic injustice, tearing children from all those who cherish them above all else. Envision a reality where no belief in pseudoscience or the supernatural, which allow for such offenses to humanity, exist. And ask yourself, would such a reality be one with fewer atrocities in favor of greater health and happiness? In doing this, you take the first step in making that reality our very own. Imagine a world where people gave serious thought to questions of why we love, why we feel wonder and awe, and why we consider some actions moral and others immoral. Listen, Morty, I hate to break it to you, but what people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. It hits hard, Morty, then it slowly fades, leaving you stranded in a failing marriage. I did it. Your parents are going to do it. Break the cycle, Morty. Rise above. Focus on science. Trust me, you don't want to know why we consider some things wrong and some things right. Imagine a world that wasn't saturated by mainstream religion. Religious messages have been so normalized, people will take on very baggage-heavy labels as a default. Out of peer pressure, it's what's expected of them to do, even if they don't truly believe. And thus, undue reverence is given to ideas that are as equally absurd is any other mythology we have left far behind us. Imagine a world in which people didn't pretend to know things that they can't possibly know. How is it impossible to know if God exists? Imagine a world without religious moral authorities. When faced with an action that conflicts with our conscience, we tend to rationalize it to avoid the mental conflict between doing something bad and being a decent person, one way being to project the responsibility onto an authority. If there were no morally authoritative religions in the world, then people wouldn't have the option to shunt responsibility onto an intangible, infallible, unchallengeable moral authority. 
knowingly harmful actions in terms of prejudicial or even violent acts couldn't be excused by obeying the will of God. Of course, this isn't applicable to all religions nor- I assume Christianity isn't one of those religions. Imagine a world where- Hey look it's that guy who doesn't understand how virtual particles work. Religious reverence isn't used as a shield for pedophiles so that they can be recirculated into finding new victims in new areas. Imagine a world where children aren't scared of eternal damnation in hell just for being themselves. They can go out, be free, love who they want to, and not have to worry about burning forever in the lake of fire. Imagine in a world, well look who we have here, where religion didn't teach that prayer or communicating with God would fix all of the world's problems. The Bible doesn't claim God is a magic genie in the sky who gives you whatever you ask for. For example, after a natural disaster such as the recent hurricanes, people would potentially donate more money instead of gathering for prayer. Let's stick to what we know actually helps, instead of communicating to a god we can't prove is there and who supposedly created the hurricane to begin with. Imagine a world where morals and rules aren't dictated by ancient texts, but are allowed to develop and evolve as society changes. What if society started accepting pedophilia? Can you imagine how far along medicine would be if religion hadn't stepped in the way of stem cell research? Granted, we'd be farther along with regards to all medicine, but my focus is actually stem cell. Imagine a world without honor killing, where gays don't fear for their lives and where women everywhere are given equal respect and an equal voice and are treated like human beings rather than assimilating faceless into an ocean of silent black trash bags.